Dr. Luke Ray here, and in today's video, I'm going to give you my first impressions of Ixion, a new game from Bulwark Studios that just dropped on December 7th. So Ixion is a city building management game set on a space station that has some interesting survival and exploration elements. And all that is wrapped together by an interesting, so far, space opera style story. So loading up the game for the first time, I was struck by two things. First, the vaguely sinister, cool vibes, the loading screen and the music and the RGB integration. When I double clicked on the icon to run Ixion for the first time, all the RGB on my computer went black. I thought it had crashed. But then when the loading screen came up and there's a little gold bar that went across the screen and I noticed that that was mirrored on my keyboard RGB, a little gold streak of keys going across, I figured it out. So all the Corsair RGB on my computer is controlled by a piece of software called IQ. And honestly, I had forgotten that there was such a thing as IQ game integration. So I'd never encountered a game that had this built into it, and it really, really reinforced the vibes of the game. The game starts with an awesome cutscene showing you launching from Earth a little bit about what's going on in the world and then takes you up to the space station uh, called Tycoon. Maybe a little on the nose for when you get to know a little bit about the story. So one of the cool parts about the cutscene is that it seamlessly blends in to the gameplay. You land on the space station and then it takes you right inside. And one of the things I didn't like was how your momentum was killed by a lot of exposition. You get a rundown on the space station from both your AI assistant and some guy with a gruff voice. And it's just a lot of kind of windy voiceovers that kills the momentum of the cool start of the game from the cutscene. As I said, the station is called Tycoon. You can flip between three views of the station. The interior view where you'll do most of your play. An exterior view of the station where you'll just upgrade the parts out there like solar panels and then a planetary system view where you can do some exploration, try to find some materials for your space station. So most of your play is concentrated on the interior view and the space system view. So in the space station view, there's a number of currencies to keep track of, but it's not overwhelming amount, at least so far where I am in chapter three of the game. So there's raw resources to mine from asteroids like silica and ore, and then manufactured versions of all the resources like alloy from ore or electronics from silica. And of course, no management game would be complete without counting up science to unlock tech as you go along in the game. So one thing you'll notice early about the game is that there's a minor puzzle aspect. Because you're inside of a space station, space, physical space, is at a premium. And so you have to lay out roads and you need to get all the buildings and things that you build in your space station to fit together to maximize the amount of things you can fit in each sector. And speaking of the sector system, there's six sectors of your space station that you unlock with a pretty good amount of resources as you go along. And that's one part of the game that I don't know if I really like. It kind of forces false scarcity of space and you have to do importing and exporting and migration of your workers between sectors. Why can't they just walk through the door? Why can't it just automatically be spread? It is really kind of a game mechanic that's forced a little bit, I think but it does make for some decisions on where you spread your resources that are somewhat interesting. So the early game is a little slow paced. I found myself having to speed up time to not sit there and wait for things to happen. That's not uncommon in these type of games. So you finish with the first chapter, which is kind of a tutorial. And that comes with another cool cutscene, which I won't talk about a little bit because I don't want to spoil any of the story of the game. But then that takes you into the next chapter. You finish all your goals there, you do a little exploration, and then you go to the next chapter and it keeps getting more and more complicated. Now I'm in that third chapter and there's certainly more after that. And I'll be definitely making some more videos about this game because I do enjoy playing it. And so I'll fill us in on how the mechanics evolve over time. So play on the inside of the space station is pretty much your standard city builder management sim, balancing the different economies, but there is a little bit more of a survival element. You have to keep your power up, you have to keep your whole integrity up, and then when there's accidents and people die, you have to be very cognizant to keep your population intact so you have the amount of workers that you need to do everything in the game. So speaking of hull integrity, you have to stop the hull integrity repair to upgrade the outside of the space station, say with solar panels for additional power. This mechanic actually led me to get a game over in chapter two because I didn't have the resources to complete the solar panel when I hit the button. And so I wasn't able to restart hull integrity repair and the whole became, integrity became zero, and I got a game over. Uh, not a real smart move, and something I found out the hard way is that you might wanna save a little more often. The play in the space station view is visually a lot like Stellaris, 
with a pretty good soundtrack, not quite as good as Stellaris. I don't know about you guys, but that's something that I always play in the background when I'm trying to do some work. But the main mechanic there is sending out probes to find resources and you send out your mining ship and your cargo ship to go grab those resources. And then you can also find different planets that bring up some interesting decisions, largely text-based, that you send your science ship out to, to investigate. And that's one of the main ways that the story moves forward is finding these planets and then sending out your science ship to deal with them. I found chapter two to be a little bit slow because it was driven by this gameplay element of sending out space probes and I needed to find a particular station in space, but it took me a lot of space probes to get to the right point to find that station. So I was kind of sitting around firing space probes, even though the rest of the game was ready to move on. And there are elements in the game, both from your science ship exploring planets and requests from inside your station that give you decisions to make. And one interesting decision by the developers is you can't click out of that screen to kind of gather information to help you make those decisions. You're forced there and then to maybe commit to uh, building a certain building inside your space station or making the decision to send one crew member or all your crew to explore something on an alien planet. There's a few beginner tips that I would have liked to have known before I started. So you need to realize that space is limited and there is almost like a puzzle element to the game. My placement of my first few buildings was rather haphazard, so I had a lot of dead space between the buildings where I can't fit anything. I didn't know what the size of the future buildings were. And so I would recommend fitting things as close together as possible and not leaving space between buildings. And then don't think you can just leave all your buildings on. Workers at a premium and power is at a premium. So you might need to turn off a few of your existing systems to build a new building and run it without things starting to break down by overworking your existing workers. So don't be afraid to power down a couple of those other buildings while you work on other projects. And so sometimes the game moves a little bit slow for me, but I did stay up till midnight playing the game. So it still has that one more turn quality, even though it's not turn based, but I, I think you know what I mean. So when my wife watches me play games like this, she says it looks like a job and I don't disagree. It really is like a job, but it's a job that I enjoy allocating scarce resources and having to figure out how different systems fit together. And if you like that, I think you'll like Ixian and it also has a pretty cool vibe. I like the kind of dark vibe, but it's not over the top. It's not scary. It's not like prey where you're like frightened for your life while you're in your space station, but it does seem like you're on the verge of something going wrong and there's a nice tension in the story as well and I'm looking forward to see where it goes beyond the point where I am in the game. So somebody that spends most of their time playing satisfactory and really concentrating on the logistics part of the game, it was a nice change to switch to something that was a little bit more narrative driven, but it still had some of the same elements of trying to figure out logistics and how things fit together. So if you like satisfactory, I would recommend that you give this game a try. And if you've never played satisfactory before, but you like other city builders and management sims, I think this is a pretty good one and I think the story is pretty good and I think that most players will enjoy this game. Please let me know in the comments what you thought about this video and please consider subscribing if you want to catch what I have coming up next. I guarantee you, you're going to enjoy it. So until next time, I'm Dr. Loot Crate and stay stoked out there.